Here in our garage, this will be the first repair to our Nissan Z. Um, I noticed that the mirror is actually cracked here. So I just got this bottle of crazy glue that's black. The biggest bottle of cyanoacrylate you'll ever see. I'll just stick it back together. The cracked feature is right here along the edge. So what I figure is I just need to repair this section here. Let's just see, if I pull it apart a little bit, that helps. Ooh, it's leaking a lot more than I expected. So my next order of business is to install a radiator kit for the uh, oil and also eventually for the automatic transmission. I've got these brackets that came as a kit and one of them I bought separately. But the main uh, beast that drives the whole thing this radiator. It's, uh, I believe it's a 20, let's see, 24 row, row radiator. It comes from Grassroots Motorsport in Toronto, Canada. And uh, it's a little bit expensive to get these. You can get to them for cheaper on Amazon, but the thing is, it's a critical component, so if it fails, you don't want your oil spilling everywhere on the road. Uh, so ideally, this will allow me to gas the throttle without any problems and it comes with what they call these AN10 fittings which are very nice. The only thing is you need to add some Teflon tape so I'll figure that out soon enough. So the idea is that you have um, a separate adapter. Um, this one I found the same model that they were selling for $150 I found for $50 on uh, AliExpress. So what happens is that there is a um, thermostatic coil in there with wax in it that changes when the oil can pass through and then you get this adapter that can screw into the slot where the original plate was. It's exactly the same screw as the one in the oil filter and it goes in there and then you screw your oil filter on and then it gives you the two extra exits for the uh, oil lines that you bring to your radiator. So here we've got a manifestation of having a uh, car that's been worked on. My bumper is not the original bumper, it's the Nismo version with the uh, air inlets for the brakes, but someone has installed it using self-tapping screws, which already I'm not a fan of, but then the funny thing is that some of them are the star design and some of them are the square design, so what you come to figure out that once you've removed all the clips and screws, there's one screw that goes underneath the bumper here. I don't know if it's usually a screw or a bolt, but in my case, it's a screw with a washer. And then just clips hold it on the side here. And you can pull it like that. In my case, nothing is attached, there are no daytime running lights. So my bumper just comes off. You want a way to pass your hoses through. So the ideal way is to go behind the bash bar here, and then you have access. I think I'm going to put my oil filter on this side and my not my filter, my cooler, and then on the other side the automatic transmission cooler. This can be cut and removed, it's just an air dam. And then this piece goes between your um, windshield washer fluid and the fender. And then you go to the back here and grab it and pull it through towards the engine. Just in order to see what I'm doing, I've decided to drop the fender liner here. <coughs> Happily, I have extra pins that I can use. And then I, I really love installing these fender plugs, but <laughs> taking them off is a pain. <laughs> Especially the old ones. Ah, there we go. With the fender liner removed, we can see that there's this conveniently placed hole where the AC lines originally go through and where you can just loop your own hoses. I'm just gonna try to bring them there. This is the hole that we just passed the hoses through. These are the hoses coming out. And there is our oil filter placement. So all I gotta do now is figure out how I want to place the hoses. I don't really like this bracket because what am I supposed to do with these randomly placed bolt holes? They don't even match with any of the, I mean, I guess you could match this with area with that area in general, but then you'd have to use, anyway. This bracket is perfect. Um, I can just place it here, and you can see that the holes line up. This one will line up with that one, this one will line up with that one. I didn't know how this would attach specifically, uh, but luckily I do happen to have with me the uh, kind of the under tray uh, brackets. Uh, I don't know what you call them, like pins. 
and they come with exactly the same style of bolt as you can see is here so it's just a washer bolt you pin it inside and you just screw it in Nissan comes with the ability to install these uh, brackets they just haven't installed the coolers unless you have a specific version of the uh, I think it's a Nismo or whatever it would be which I don't have so you need to put in coolers on yourself now with this in place you can just place the cooler on the flat plastic beam that's here I'll have to remove this which is the uh, power steering cooler because it's definitely in my way Ooh. there's a slight issue the bracketry inside the oil cooler up top will collide with the uh, air conditioning cylinder that's here I don't exactly know what that's for but I know it's a cylinder that goes upwards but this configuration does fit we see that we can bolt here we can add the other bolt here I pre-filled this bad boy. Let's see it enter its precincts. There we go. A bit of cable management on that side. And you have it in place in no time. Right, so all of this fits very well, but it's very floppy. It's been scientifically determined that a bracket should fit right about here. That is science. With everything in place, I'm attempting to connect the lines, and I was thinking I would not have to remove this bash bar, but I guess there are no shortcuts today. <laughs> Removing the bash bar makes everything a lot less tedious than it was originally. Now that I'm fairly confident everything will work, I'm doing the oil change. That'll allow me to remove the oil filter and place the thermostatic plate against it. It's a lot easier to mount the plate loosely first and then to put it in rather than trying to plug in the cables as they are not going to enter your filter plate at the right angle. To my great surprise and amazement, I haven't seen this configuration yet on a video, but it was possible to put the thermostatic plate facing towards the engine right behind the alternator. The hoses are connected and are coming out here uh, towards the um, bumper. So we'll see if this works. I'm going to start the engine and hope for the best.